Welcome to the SRS Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron J. Babiar, and I'm the Training Director of Support Raising Solutions. Whether you're a new ministry worker or a veteran looking to increase your competence and confidence, Support Raising Solutions seeks to bless you in your quest to be a spiritually healthy, vision-driven, fully funded Great Commission worker. All right, my guest once again today is Jen Fortner. Now listen, we did a part one of this podcast last week. If you haven't listened to it, please go back and listen to it because otherwise some of this might not make very much sense. Uh, Jen is an old friend and uh, she and her family are fantastic and just love them to death. And, and so Jen and I are talking about not giving up, not quitting on this path towards being spiritually healthy, vision driven and fully funded. So Jen, before we kind of pick up where we left off last week. Uh, real quick, what is one of the favorite shows that you and your husband, Zach, have streamed or, or a movie you've gotten? What, what, what's some sort of media thing that you guys have enjoyed together as a couple sometime in the last year and a half of you, as, as you've kind of you know survived the, the, the whole COVID stuff? Oh, man. You know, <laughs> you're, you're asking me at a time where uh, Zach hasn't been home at night a lot, but we are really into actually reading right now. So we've been taking a little bit of a, a breakster from the Netflix um, right. or whatever. Okay. And so I am currently reading a book on habit change. And I'm also reading a book called permission to feel by Mark Brackett. And it is on emotional intelligence. Oh, so nice. Yeah. So those are kind of some of the things that I'm into right now. Um, I'm also taking a lot of um, coaching classes and sort of refining and sharpening my tools. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of I'm, I'm not going to go uh, easy breezy on you. I guess I'm saying <laughs> I'm trying to make it all count right now. <laughs> you went for the depth. I was like, I'm hey, deep. So I'm going deep. deep but. <laughs> OK, we'll turn about fair play then. So uh, <laughs> The last book that I read that I really got a lot out of is by Michael Brunner. Uh -huh. It's called Absorbing the Wisdom. And it's just really a practical, super smart. I mean, the guy clearly loves Jesus, but also he's led some uh, some great uh, organization and nonprofits. Like you can just tell this is a guy that is a seasoned veteran that loves Jesus, but also has done a ton of ministry in his life. But he's kind of a CEO, nonprofit mm -hmm. leader type. And that's just... Those are the kind of people that, um, man, I just, if I even hang around them or I get coached by them or I read a book by them, I always pick up little snippets of wisdom that, that I just yeah. need. Yeah. So I read that book and I was like, man, I'm a, I'm a better leader for reading that book. It's called mm -hmm. Absorbing the Wisdom. So that's cool. All right. So if we, uh, the next time I have you on the podcast, Jen, I need more of a surfacey answer because we just, <laughs> okay. so, come on, come on. I can't say we did watch with the kids. We just watched Luca and it's pretty good. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm staying away from Disney. Well, no, I'm not. I guess I'm watching the Marvel stuff, but I digress. So, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So to pick up from where we were last week, we just, just ever so slightly touched on the idea of Sabbath. Jen, how does somebody how does somebody raise support and and take a day off? I mean, hey, like, how do you raise support, Aaron, and not take a day off? That's right. what everybody else is asking. I'm with you. I am with you. But you know, for a lot of people, they're like, well, no, it's Sunday. That's that's when I go to church. It's when I see people that might be willing to join my team. How can I right. not? How, like, so what 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 do you mean when you when you when you talk about about two leaders? When you talk two leaders and you talk about rest, you talk about Sabbath. Unpack that for us because yeah, you don't want so, people to burn out. But that's one of the ways they're going to give up and burn out is because they're not getting that rest. Yep. So the missionaries I work with, they they run the church circuit pretty hard, and they've got like five minute windows that they'll speak at on a pretty regular basis. And they're booked out for every Sunday. And then they've also got, you know, full services that they do. And then the pastor takes them out to lunch afterwards. And then they go, you know, to Sunday school in the morning as well. So Sabbath is not so much a Sunday for some of the people that I work with. Okay. Um, so that's not necessarily, so think outside of the box. It doesn't have to be Sunday that you take the day off. Right. Awesome. If you do, um, but, uh, not everybody's in that boat. So that is raising support in particular. Um, so what I mean by Sabbath is, you know, well, first off, just don't burn out by not taking one. It is super important. Mm -hmm. Um, super, super important. And what I mean by Sabbath is, you know, you could go so far as to, here's what I do, Aaron. I'll just tell you what I do for my Sabbath rest day. I don't shop. 
I don't watch shows or consume media. Okay. Um, and I don't, uh, I do things, but I do things that really give joy. So mm. I'll, and I'll be really intentional with my kids and they'll have fun. And so sometimes we'll put a, a big old cookie and the, you know, iron skillet and just dump a ton of ice cream on it and all eat it together. <laughs> nice. Um, we go slow. We play in the backyard. We read. Out, that cookie sounds awesome. Marky and I are going to come Sabbath with you guys. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing is we sometimes, I don't think we know anymore what rest actually means. Um, I think that a lot of people equate resting to, you know, sitting on the couch and eating a bunch of chips and watching Netflix, which <laughs> is funny that you asked me that question earlier. Yeah. I think that's fine every once in a while. And I'm not saying it's bad, but what are you doing to actually rest your brain and your mind? And really science, you know, shows us that it's really important to give yourself a break. Yes. And it's not just checking your phone and it's not just catching up on errands, although those things are important too. But it's a portion of a day or a whole day where you really just unplug, unwind, give yourself a break, laugh with your kids if you've got them, like laugh with your spouse if you've got that. If you're if you're single, you know, spend the time doing something that you love, um, whether that's mountain biking, like we talked about last time or, you know, swimming or whatever it is that brings you joy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. it's about that. It's not so much about like, I have to lay in bed all day either. But I think I stop being a consumer whenever I'm Sabbathing. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And so, you know, at the end of a Sabbath, um, you know, some, let's say someone, you know, they're, they're in a season where they really need to raise support. Uh, describe how should that person feel, I guess, how, like, what did describe at the, you know, so when you have Sabbath, well, cause I'm definitely hearing you say not everybody has to Sabbath the exact same way. What, how, how should a person feel like what, how, yeah, I how, think you how ready feel, are they for what's next? So to speak? Yeah, I think you should, you should feel full, you know, you should feel, um, cozy, you know, that word, uh, huga comes to mind. Uh, the Scandinavians have it completely right. They're like, you know, lighting candles and laughing with their friends and, doing iron skillet cookies and, you know, making a really great meal and all enjoying it together. Um, mm -hmm. I, th I find I love my kind of equating it with that word hookah. Um, are you familiar with that word, Aaron? Well, I, I mean, I've seen people smoke from a hookah, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, hookah. It's H-Y-G-G-E. Okay. Um, and um, I'm really into it. And just, it's just sort of a cozy, warm, full feeling um, fully alive spiritually, you know, you're spending time in the word that day. You are, wow. um, spending time in prayer that day, ideally, um, and feeling like your brain has sort of kind of emptied, yeah. um, to a place where you feel like you've, you've been rested, you know, mm, it's good. So. You know, I, I want to bring up a point here and it's that your Sabbath doesn't have to look like somebody else's. Totally. Meaning. Yeah. Jen just described her cookie ice cream uh, amalgamation, and <laughs> but um, <laughs> that doesn't have to be what yours is. Now, your yours could be that. And I, unfortunately, Jen, I, I got some spiritual abuse as a kid, not from my parents, but um, we were associated with a denomination that's going to remain unnamed here. But um, like that, that was just rules and like beat down, and like I totally remember going outside and playing catch uh -huh. with a friend and an older Christian person come down and just lay down the judgment on us because we were playing sports on God's day. And it was Ooh, just, that's not cool. Oh, so not cool. So not cool. And yet that was like a definition of Sabbath for me. In fact, it still is here. I am at the time we're recording this, I am 48 years old and on, on a day off for me on a Sabbath day for me, most of the time that's going to either involve bicycling or playing basketball. I mean, it just, yeah, I was going to say, you're going to be playing basketball aren't you? <laughs> Absolutely. My knees are starting to disagree with me, but my jump shot is still there and I can't let go. Right. So I oh. love to play. Even last night during, uh, during some of the things that were going on outside in our neighborhood, we kind of have a big like neighborhood festival thing. And, and we were outside and, you know, at one point I found myself just shooting hoops because that's just like, I don't know, it's life giving me. So on a day off for me, it's not that I don't spend time with Jesus. It's not that I don't read my Bible, connect deeply with my wife, uh, you know, connect, connect with my kids. Those are all things I want to do. But also, I am not 
a lay around the house all day. That's just not how I'm wired. Um, I found myself organizing my my garage. To some people, that would be like the worst definition of the day off would be cleaning their garage. For me, I love it. Totally. I some old 80s rap music or something like that or rock and roll and, mm-hmm. and I've got the garage door open and I'm cleaning and I am like happy. Now, that might not be others at all, but at the end of the day, I love how you describe you feel full. Mm-hmm. At, the, at the end of yesterday, I'm, I'm full. I'm mm-hmm. ready for a new week. Like, And I definitely spent some great time with the Lord yesterday. And yesterday wasn't a worship day for me. We, went to, we didn't go to church yesterday. We went on a different day. So all this to say, we could, we could spend a lot of time on this. But even when you're raising support, the reality is you need a day each week where you connect with your creator and you breathe and you get full in, in whatever that means, but like you're full of the spirit for sure, but also you are physically, emotionally, cognitively ready for a fresh week. Is, is that a, is that a good definition, Jen? Oh, hundred percent. And it, you're so right on to point out that it is so different for everyone else. And it's based off of personality. It's based off of what fills you up, you know? So yeah, yeah I think that's really important. Okay, I think we have time to hit an, another one of our points in, in, in this episode. I'm starting to feel like this is probably going to be a three-part episode, but it's good. <laughs> this is good. This is good practical stuff people can use right now in their support raising season and, and not giving up. So uh, the third thing that we had kind of touched on talking about had to deal with just kind of taking care of your your, your body, and, and that, that can be a diet thing, that can be a sleep thing. Uh, unpack that for us, Jen. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's, it's a little bit of self care, but maybe more in the area of, you know, I think discipline actually does lead to freedom. Um, It's not discipline in the sense of, you know, you can't play basketball on a Sabbath type of discipline. So don't hear me say like, you've got to pull up your bootstraps and go to bed at 10 o'clock at night and whatever it is, but whatever this means to you. And if you have something sort of in your spirit going, ah, oh, man, I need to do better at this. This is kind of what I'm shooting for, okay? okay. Um, going to sleep on time, eating healthy, exercise, um, and building those systems. It's not so much just to have a goal of to get to 100%, but little tweaks that can really make the difference in building systems to get to the goal. So mm-hmm. sometimes when we have the idea, and I'm kind of taking a little bit from Atomic Habits by um, James, James Clear, it's about getting 1% better every day. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the best way to do that is by not so much thinking about the goal to get to 100%, but what systems can I get to, what, what systems can I build into my life to reach that goal? Um, because everybody has the goal, like if you're, you know, trying to, to win the tour de France, everybody's goal is to win the tour de France. Right. right. That's, right. In the, but who, like, who is it to, that's going to succeed? It's the people that have the systems in place, um, in order to reach that goal. Mm-hmm. So, or it's the, the bikers, um, that, that do. So yeah. what I'm saying is, is whatever this means to you, to me during the pandemic with my kids being out of daycare, I got into the habit of waking up at six o'clock in the morning and not just waking up to when my kids woke up like at six forty five or seven. Right. And it was a game changer for me. And I have not gone back. And even on my Sabbaths, actually, I wake up at six o'clock and go on a nice long run. Um, because for me, it's important to feel healthy. It's important for me to feel vibrant. And that's the way that I do it. I'm not saying everybody needs to do exactly as I do, but it's been a game changer for me to go to sleep on time, um, and get my, you know, I'm, I'm a mom. So seven and a half hours is great. Seven, you know, seven (laughs) hours is really realistic. Eight is like glorious. But every once in a while I do get like eight to nine hours of sleep and I'll go to bed early, but eating healthy, Um, not just eating with what, you know, whatever's in front of you, but really getting to the place where your metabolism is like firing on all cylinders and you're feeling good in your body. It makes a big difference. It makes a big difference with your cognition and your head as well. So an exercising going on walks, um, is, is great as well. And will will increase your energy. Um, so I just think that building those systems to, uh, self care is really important during a support raising season because it is a busier season um, than usual, particularly if you're trying to do it while you're, you know, with some of the missionaries that I work with, they have full-time jobs while they're raising their support. Um, Not saying that that's, you know, 
uh, normative, but that's what they're experiencing. So I'm really into like, okay, what are you doing to take care of yourself? What does that look like for you? Is there something that you feel that you could do better in that area so that you can keep up with your energy? What does energy look like to you? Like asking yourself those questions and trying to drill down into, okay, what solutions can I put in place so that I'm 1% better every day instead of depleted, instead of tired, instead of hungry, instead of, you know, those things that sort of drag us down without us noticing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Practical example. So I have a buddy who, when he was raised in support, he began to realize this, this, this idea that you're talking about of, of, of discipline, not, not from a standpoint of holding him down, but discipline from a standpoint of freeing him up. And he, and I mentioned this guy on a couple of boot camps, maybe even a couple of different podcasts, and I don't say his name, but the reality is I can't remember if it's 60 or 80 pounds that, that this friend of mine lost <laughs> while he was raising support and he wasn't raising support to lose weight. The reality is the discipline that it required him to raise support caused him to start thinking about his sleep. It caused him to start thinking about his eating. He began to realize that he was more alert and clear and, and clear and walking with the Lord and, re and ready for the spiritual aspect of support raising. If he got up in the morning and went for a run and, you know, limited his calorie intake. And anyway, so like, like I said, he lost 60 to 80 pounds over a few months time while he got fully funded. Now, I think knowing him pretty well, I think if he would have had the goal of, I need to raise support and get thinner, I don't think that would have worked for him at all. Mm -hmm. Like that would have been like too much pressure. But because he was like, I, I need to get enough rest, not too much. I need to eat right, not overeat. I need to exercise. Like those habits that he developed – uh, just start with some really simple daily goals, some really simple daily systems that just erupted in all kinds of health in multiple areas of his life. So um, yeah. you and mentioned I, James Clear is 1% better. I, I really think that idea of just trying to do things, not, not trying to be 100% better every day, but being 1% better every day, that's something you can build off of a whole lot easier. Right. You start small and then eventually you find that you like it and you go big. And Aaron, I want to ask you a question. Do you yeah. know any leaders that you admire that don't incorporate discipline in sleep, discipline in exercise, discipline in, in bottle, like health, like eating healthy? Do you know any leaders that you really admire that are like killing it, doing the, you know, the best that they can and really leading well. Do you know anybody that doesn't do that? No, they all do that. They all do that. Even, even the people that are just normal like you and me and the rest of us, that sometimes maybe they kind of fall off that wagon of eating healthy or exercising right or getting enough sleep. They always eventually go back to, oh, you know what? I, I need to reincorporate that discipline into my life. So if they fall off that wagon, they get back on pretty soon because they realize I need this to thrive. Yeah. And that's, and that's what I'm saying too. And I, you know, as I think of, it's not something that we, we really love to talk about, but I really can't think of too many leaders in particular with sleep that are, you know, going to bed at one o'clock in the morning and waking up at 10. Like it just, that's, I don't see that. And yeah. so I want to cultivate that in my life too, because I want, I want to be a world changer. Yeah. I want to give my, my best self, you know, every day. And I think that those type of um, practices and really um, embodying that is just good for me at the end of the day. So, so. true. So true. All right. So we are not a uh, self-help health zone podcast. And <laughs> yet, <laughs> these are really practical things that you can employ into your support raising process that we actually believe will, will help you spiritually and physically thrive and uh, emotionally, all, all that stuff gets wrapped up in that. And so, Jen, I, I'm realizing that we definitely need to to do a third podcast to kind of finish out this topic, at least for what our intent was. So I'm going to go ahead and and, and call, call this episode uh, complete um, and, and based off just what we've talked about to this point, because we've hit... We've hit about three different things that are pretty significant over the past couple of podcasts. Any any closing thoughts today before we, we pick this up next week? 
No, I think I think we're we're doing good. We've got a couple more to go, so we'll see you guys soon. So yeah, come back next week. And uh, Jen Fortner, my friend, thank you so much once again for being on the SRS podcast. Mm-hmm. Thanks for joining us for this episode. We would love to hear your ideas for future content. Please visit supportraisingsolutions.org/feedback to share your thoughts and questions. Also, wherever you download your podcast from. Be sure to subscribe for future episodes and come back each week to gain more insight into the process of building and maintaining your personal support team.